I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You please bow your heads for a moment. Dear Lord, Please watch over this group this evening in our small, humble corner of the world. And please watch over other local, state, national, and world leaders as we try to make decisions that are good for our community and what's best for everybody around us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Reading and approval of the minutes from October 3rd, please. Motion to approve and suspend reading. Second motion by Hack. Second, Second by Weedrick. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Minutes are approved. Okay, the approval of the, the agenda. Any changes or additions to the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion by Weedrick. Second. And second by Stern. Discussion. All in favor of approving this agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Well, the agenda is set. Moving down to 5A, Engineer's Report. Grant, welcome. Thank you. I'll start the construction update here. We've got a couple of things on our report today. B&G Electric, they've been on site now a little bit getting the controls and electrical for the tower completed. I know they've been working with Dave about installing that panel and getting all that ready to get the tower online. They have they expect to have that done by midweek this week. So then that tower will be able to be online by then. We'll just be waiting on the final connections for TAN next week. And then that tower will be done. And they'll work on the demo starting October 31st. But back to BNG, they submitted CAP 2, contractors pay out 2, for $27,185.52. We would recommend approval of that at this time. Let's take action on this if you would like, please. Motion to approve. Motion by Hack. Second. Second by Weedrick. Discussion. Roll call. Hack. Aye. Weedrick. Aye. Hiller. Aye. Stern. Aye. Obenauer. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, then the second contractor, DN Tanks, they completed pressure tests and bacteria tests last week just to make sure that tank was, wasn't leaking anywhere. Um, and then they did the bacteria test to make sure it was past the drinking water and everything. So that's completed. Their remaining item there is going to be site work. So they have a crew coming in starting Monday. So they're going to backfill it on the tank, do the little parking pad up there, and then do the remaining site work. And then that's their remaining item. So like I said, that tower is going to be ready starting end of this week. Okay. And they submitted contractor's application for payment number six, and this is for $8,983.58. We would recommend it for the purpose of this time. Okay, thank you. Motion to approve the payment. A motion by Weedrick. Second. Second by Pillar. Discussion. All in favor, no. roll call. Weedrick. Aye. Pillar. Aye. Hack. Aye. Stern. Aye. Open hour. Aye. Motion carried. Murray? There were two gentlemen up there today. I went up and talked to them, uh, both from Texas, and they were working on a leak on the water tower. So they, it wasn't necessarily a leak. So they filled, they injected the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. So the water, there's a diaphragm on the inside, and it gets condensation in between the concrete and the diaphragm. So they just sealed around the bottom there to inject so that water doesn't. The leak that's on the outside of the diaphragm. It's still holding on the inside of that diaphragm. So we did the water level check and it was within spec of where it's the allowance for it to 
go down or up. So it'd be pretty cool to hit. So. so is the base of that water tower always going to have the, a little bit of water kind of seeping out of there? No, nope, they did inject grout around there now. So they did that this week. They got an epoxy to inject around there. Okay. It did meet our passing test and everything, and they just they didn't like the puddle sitting down there just for aesthetic looks. And if you have people questioning it, I mean, it doesn't look good to have a puddle sitting around the bottom of it. But it was a small enough puddle that we monitored it, drew lines around it, and it passed the eighth of an inch spec. So it was within spec. So how long do we monitor that? Um, we'll monitor it. We have the year warranty on it, so we can monitor it for the next year and everything. But so do we, when they leave, do we have Dave go up there, or our water guys, daily to check on something? I wouldn't say no. It, like I said, it was, it didn't drop over an eighth of an inch, so it's not going to be anything drastic. And they, it's still on the outside of that diaphragm. So the concrete's not the one sealing it, it's the diaphragm on the inside. Thank you. Let's open on the diaphragm then, like I said, what's... Is it made out of like rubber or plastic or what's it? Um, I guess I'm not sure what it's made out of, but it goes concrete, diaphragm, and then concrete again. So the diaphragm's in between the concrete on the inside. Okay. And that's what's sealing it. So they just did around the footing and the concrete on the outside. They just put some epoxy. And TAN Construction is the third contractor. Their remaining work is going to be... Thanks, Murray. Their remaining work on this is going to be the connection of the existing tank. And they'll be down here starting in the middle of this week. They've kind of been in town doing some of the work at the water treatment plant. <coughs> but they'll be back to do the connection of the existing tank. And then when they come back, they'll complete the restoration and seeding. They'll have some seeding around that existing tank if they wanted to do that all at once. Clean the soil up, seed everything. And then they'll have the demo. They plan to start October 31st on the demo of that. And then, of course, the change order items that were approved the other month. They didn't have a payout this month. They didn't complete any work, so no payout there. Any questions on the project? I did send Monty the project update. And that included the notice for the residents about the increased pressure. And if they notice anything, give me your city hall a call. And we'll coordinate that. Um, it just puts a question of doubt in your mind when there's a puddle of water there. And is that something we have to deal with for the next 30 years? <laughs> yeah. 50 years? Is that typical? of? They said it is typical on some towers. It just depends where that water soaks into. Um, so some, some of that concrete had water that just released. And they were confident. They said it's happened before, so they put the epoxy on the outside. But when you have that big wood tower and only goes down less than an eighth of an inch of water, we're confident as well that it's not going to leak. So, But they explained exactly how it happened, why it happened. We talked to other contractors and our water expert in our office as well. So. Also, too, I guess, as that leaks a little bit, even if that water, I guess, if we're freeze, I guess, is that going to do any kind of damage? Well, that now they, you know, they injected that epoxy around the bottom, so now it won't leak in that area. So they injected Well, it's just going to leak right up on the outside of the wall. It's going to stop there, right? So, again, the tower is not freeze right there at the outside of the wall, I would think. Yeah. So the water's not coming out of the tower. It's coming out of the concrete in there. And that'll stop. Like there's only so much water in that concrete that could come out, but not that they injected it, so it won't come out. Um, so it won't leak anymore. Is the injection. So oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It won't leak on the ground, but yeah. it'll still probably be like right there. Right there at the edge of the outside of the thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I would think that that would then, that spot would then, I mean, over time, I mean, I guess it'd freeze and stuff, you know, expand. Yeah, it could freeze on the outside of the tower, but it would just be like surface freezing, like snow melt or rain, kind of same thing. 
Well, I guess I'm kind of like sword and bone tattoo now. Yeah. I mean, I would think that a brand new tank, it shouldn't leak, I guess, one drop. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like I said, we'll monitor it for the next year. We'll be up here. We can monitor it, make sure that nothing's coming out or any of that. But um, we've talked with them, we've talked with multiple tank builders, and um, we're confident with this. So. So then another item on our list is the PAR grant. So we talked with Monty about this. This is something that is newer to the SRF program, and that's something we explored using the DWSRF for the tank project when we didn't go through with it, but it's a funding source where they do a loan, a 2% loan. But the PAR grant is a new one they're using, so the SRF has extra money, so they, this is one way they're using it. And it's, a, it's an 80% grant for engineering fees for a study, and it covers one. It also covers 100% of your cleaning and televising. So in other towns, we've done whole towns where we clean and televise the sewer, and then the tapes get sent to us to review. We write the report, and it covers 80% of that. So it's an $18,000 study. Covered SRF covers 15,000 of that, and the local share is 3,000. And you could you can televise and clean your whole sewer system. For 100% grant on that. So when we when we did our street updates, we televised quite a bit of our system out there. Did we? Are there areas that because we didn't do street upgrades in those areas, we did not televise in those areas? I believe there are areas that you guys are kind of going through now and doing a amount of, or certain blocks at a time, and you're working with Pace to do that. And so when they come through, you're doing three or four blocks at a time. So we would work with Dave and those guys to figure out what blocks have been done and not do those blocks. But like I said, it covers 100% of that. So if you guys want to just knock out the rest of your town right there and just get it done with for 100% right there. When's that grant application due? I think it's just a rolling application. Yes. Okay, I think that's a fabulous way to do We were kind of surprised that what they all covered. We did the first one, we're like, oh, you're going to cover everything, mm -hmm. and then it's just 3,000 local share. Yeah. So it's for towns under 2,500, so you guys are right on the cusp of that, and it'd be 22 or something. Um, so it's a so, great so deal. now, if we've, if we've communicated with Pace right now to come in and we've given them a list of sites that we want them to look at, is that considered a contractual agreement, or can we go back and rebid everything? Yeah, so you'd have to rebid. You have to bid the project publicly. And then we have to submit a bid tab to SRF, and then they review it just to make sure it was a public bid mm -hmm. competitive, because they want they don't want to sole sourcing it to someone and they can ramp the price up, and then they cover 100% of that. So you do have to publicly bid it. So like I said, you can do as many blocks as you want. And okay. yeah, and what, and so we don't need to take action now, then we can. Um, we would at this time we would seek authorization to get quotes on that okay. and we would go out and get quotes and send it to the companies that are doing this. We'd work with Dave and those guys to see what blocks we want yeah. to get the quotes, bring them back, and then we'd apply. Then we can decide. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then this does also, so if you would go through with the sewer project after that, it ranks you higher on their CWSRF list. Mm. So coming up here is the CWSRF priority list I'm going to talk about next. Mm. If you have completed the PAR grant, it pushes you up. To, on that priority list, and then there's grant funds available through that as well. Okay. It's a pretty good deal. Do we have any objections to them starting that process? No. Okay, good. And then we will bring the bid tab back next month on that. It doesn't take long to get that. Good. Then the next one, CWSRF questionnaire. These are just it's no obligation to do a project, but they do this every year. Put all the put the towns on the list priority list and then they rank them. So we have been doing a sanitary sewer and storm replacement project for you guys, just in case it's nothing specific. We just do a broad project for you guys. If something would come up, I'm not sure the dollar total we put on that, but it puts you on the list. So if something would come up and you want that 2% loan, you guys are able to go to SRF and ask for that 2% loan. If you're not on the list, you're not eligible for the 2%. Okay. And you guys fill that up, that questionnaire out? Yeah, we'll fill it out, send it to Monty, and just have you sign it then. I think they're due first week in November. Okay. We don't need approval on that one. Good. And then the alley concrete paving. I did not drive by that, actually, on my way here. 
Um, last I talked to John, he said it was halfway done. He said it looked really good. Not moving super fast, but it looks really good. So it's for the always can ask. Can post. Yeah. He says he's doing good work. Any questions for me? That's all I have on my report. Mr. Pillar, anything? No questions on my part. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Okay, moving down to seven, seven A, water and sewer ordinance proposed revisions. Is that you, Mr. Pillar? Yeah, you will see the highlighted sections in there as Monty's flipping through the pages. The areas where where I was looking to add a little bit of teeth to it, and then also um, eliminate our involvement with removing customer-owned water meters so that our folks can stay focused on the activities that they're responsible for. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody had any questions on that. We, we looked at raising the, the late fee slightly and then also if we did get to the point where we did a physical disconnect, then the reestablishing of that service would be the following business day. Which would mean, just to put it into perspective, is that if they came in with a check um, near the end of the day when our, our folks had already left for the day on a Friday, they would not get service reestablished until Monday. Okay. So then Dan, I guess, you know, it said something about, you know, something about, <clears throat> something about, I guess, a plumber, I guess, needs to install so, the, so what the water the, meter. What the permit is, is that uh, work with those water meters is technically plumber's work, and we have provided that service with our own water crew. And so we're just putting it in there that people need to understand that <clears throat> another reason that we would not be doing the work, there's liability associated with a non-plumber, a non-qualified individual, if you will, performing that task. So then I guess, uh, you know, so then I guess when they leave, I guess, you know, you know, I guess on the services, then I guess it turned off in the fall. And then after that, then the water meter then also needs to, I guess, get, also needs to get, I guess, pulled out too. And then, and then as they come back in the spring, spring then, and the water meter then let's go back in. No. That would be if they okay. choose to do it that way. Okay. I know when we when we leave, we shut off we shut off the water inside the house there and and leave make sure that we leave enough heat in the house so that we don't have a freeze up situation. So it it depends on what level a person wants to do it. I think we have quite a number of snowbirds who leave their leave their water meters in place every winter when they depart. Okay. All right. This would relate mostly to those irrigation type meters, you know, where they're, they have a separate meter for their garden or their lawn or something, and they remove it and reinstall it every spring. Okay. And that's what we did in my old house for Christie's okay. Abbott. And the, the the south half of the house, they have the own curb stop, own meter right there in the, just in the yard, it's up below our program. And when we moved in, I didn't know what happened? All of a sudden, Dick Jacobson's over there one day putting a water meter in the yard. I didn't know what that was for. Water meter or anything. And then in the spring or in the fall, he came over and just took it out. And and that, that was just kind of standard operating procedure. And and that's was nice, but it didn't have to happen. You know, if they could shut the curb stop off and we drained, you know, we blew out our sprinkler system. You know, the meter could have stayed. You know, that, 
So that was just kind of what they were doing. So. Well, then, too, I guess we're going to have to have, I guess, a plumber then, I guess, like write something up saying that they did all this work or not? Or? Well, it's going to be the homeowner's responsibility. It's, it's a homeowner's, they, they own the water meter. Yeah, we know. So, you know if, they, if they disconnect it and put it in five times, I don't know, you know, other than, uh, I, I mean, because they're not going to be using water without the water meter in there. I don't know if we would need to be notified or not. I mean, they're, they're likely shutting their water off if they're removing the water meter. So then they are informing the, the office there that they're discontinuing service. So then I guess on that work then, I guess that's the way that I read it, all that work needs to be then, all that work needs to be done, done then I guess like by a plumber. But that's, that's my understanding and I think if you talk to any licensed plumber they would, they would agree that that is plumber work. Well we know people do it themselves, that'll happen. Yeah. And we're not asking for a letter from the homeowner, are we, Dan? Saying that they had a plumber come in and do this work? We're, we're just, I, I think the language did say in there, completed by a licensed plumber. Because we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to say as a, as a city, but if you really want to do it on your own and you know what you're doing, that's okay. We need to take that. I think, I think we're we're obligated to put the language in there that said it needs it needs to be performed by a licensed plumber. And that saves us then from liability, correct? No, but by not saying you can have your teenage kid do it. I would it. think so. <laughs> In the course of removing or putting in a water meter, yeah. we end up breaking it or something. You know, we over tighten or we don't tighten it enough and it leaks. I got to believe that there's probably liability on our part. Yeah. Well, the city can't be negligent if you're not, don't have a duty to do something. Right. In this right. case, you wouldn't have a duty to do something the homeowner does. So. That's to leave the plumber language in there then, or? It makes a difference, but you've got language, as I read, that, that requires a homeowner. It's a shift in liability on the homeowner. So. Mm -hmm. So if the homeowner decides to do it themselves or hire a plumber, it's still their responsibility. If it breaks, it's their issue, not ours. That's what the ordinance requires is that it's not, right. the city isn't going to be doing that. Yeah. I didn't compare it with your, some of the other parts of the ordinance where they're required to have city water if there's so those connections have to be by a licensed plumber if they're connecting to ours right. okay. in, in the house that's up to them. Because yeah. if they remove the curb stop or the meter, we're still, the city's still shutting the water off at the curb stop. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. Better be. <laughs> that would be, you're going to have a mess. <laughs> So is this, are you going to make, is, Dan, is this going to be a first reading of this, or is this coming back to the next meeting, or what, what's your thoughts? I think as part of this discussion tonight, if anybody had recommendations for any additional changes to it, we were asking to bring it to the meeting, offer that up, and if everybody agreed with that, then we would go ahead and make a motion with those additions to this being the first reading. If nobody else had any objections or additions to it, then yes, I would be making a motion that we would accept this as a first reading. Okay. 
Okay, any, any other concerns or questions for a reason why we wouldn't have this as a first reading? Okay, I'm not sure if you can see the head nods, Dan, but I think we're all in agreement that if you want to make a motion, feel free. Okay, then, then I would put that motion on the floor that we would treat the, these additions to and modifications to the ordinance as the first reading. Okay, we have a motion by Pillar. Second. Second by Stern. Discussion. Roll call. Miller. Aye. Stern. Aye. Hack. Aye. Wiedrich. Aye. Obenauer. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Dan. Okay, thank you. Okay, 8A, building permit for extra territorial zone for Dustin Snyder. Hold on up. All right, Monty. I know you're familiar with the building permit already. As I informed you, there was some confusion that this was supposedly ag land. The county informed me that it was not, that it had been rezoned residential when the old plat was first discussed way back when. So the conditional use permit is basically a moot point. It is residential property. So all you need to consider now is the building permit. It was reviewed by the city inspector, <coughs> Mr. Wiest. He had no concerns with the plan presented. So it's basically in your court. Okay. Yeah. Well, just for uh, the record, for clarity, I'd rather that the city rescind the previous motion that was approved. For the conditional use? For the conditional use. Just to get it off there. Good idea. And then that on the building permit. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. So we need a motion to rescind the original motion of the conditional use permit. So moved. Does Jason does Jason have to make that since he made the last motion? No, anybody no. can make it. Okay, motion by Weedrick. I'll second that. Second by Pillar. Discussion. Roll call. Weeder. Aye. Pillar. Aye. Hack. Aye. Stern. Aye. Obenauer. Aye. <coughs> Motion rescinded. All right. So back to the building permit. Um, any questions or concerns or comments for Dustin? I guess the only thing I have now, so then on the, I guess, like water part, I guess, is it going to be, be then on our main or not? Is it going to be tied in? Um, be yeah, I guess parts? that, um, that's the plan. That was, okay. Um, that's the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From speaking to the city earlier, you know, I had uh, um, arranged originally uh, to connect with Southwest Water. I had a contract kind of done up with them. And then uh, once they started digging, excavating the line in, that line was much closer to my property than the southwest line. And so that's when I reached out to the city um, asking if, I, if that was something that I could potentially connect to um, in the future with my build. And uh, everything, you know, hearing back from Monty and uh, Pat kind of looking into it, it's my understanding that it seemed like it would be fine. And so that's when I kind of started pursuing um, that connection versus the southwest or drilling the well option. So. So yeah, that's kind of where uh, I'm at right now. <coughs> and did I hear you say you you have the option of connecting directly to Southwest and then just billing through Southwest? Um, they had given me a um, uh, an application, an official application from there. I would still have to do a they have a hydraulic study and some other odd things you have to complete beforehand, but. They had said that that line would support um, would support my uh, residence there. I believe that line runs to Hishlin's um, property um, up north there. Um, yeah, it was just um, 
uh, I would have to cross through a, I think there's some power and the city main over there and then the southwest water is just on the west side of that uh, large main that runs from the new water tower to the old water tower. So it'd be a much simpler connection with running over less, um, you know, less utilities would be in, in between there too. Um, be kind of a, a shorter jog to that one. So. Did you hear all that down? Yep. Good. Yeah, I, okay. yeah I, I think I understand it. That, that means in, in essence, uh, well, in fact, that there would be no connection to cities uh, uh, water line at all. No, no, that was just an option he was exploring okay. earlier. I understand. Very okay. good. I would make a motion then to approve this application for the building permit. Okay, motion by Pillar. Second. Second by Hack. Discussion. Oh. Do we have any drawings of the locations of these various lines that are proposed? I, not in front of me, but the. Can we have, show you. But the actual show. lines? I mean, oh, do we know where they're located? Why? Southwest Dam, City of Hazen. <coughs> so you said Southwest is just west of that pipeline coming from the main dam. Go ahead, if you want to point yeah, out. Yeah, I can point out here. Uh, so yeah, there we have the, the house um, site there. Uh, this is like the biggest main line that kind of runs the old water tower. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a, some power lines that run from the substation uh, north. And I believe just to the west, you know, maybe 10 feet to the west of those power lines is the southwest line that comes and then runs over here to Hitchlands. So it runs on this west side. So for me to jog over to the uh, southwest line, there's a power utility line on, uh, on my property and then the new city water main and then the southwest line. Um, the line that I'm proposing to tie into is this one that is, uh, connects over here to Diapolis, I believe, runs along there. That line is... Um, the only the that line is just uh, on the other side of uh, uh, the road that was that new road that was constructed, and it's just a straight shot across from there. Is that is that water line right there? And then this water line is the one that runs across um, uh, my property on the south end of the property and ties into Elbow Woods. So this is the line right here that I'm interested in. Right. That clarifies it. And we do have. As built maps, not that it's here, but well, not the other. yeah, of our new line, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll be coming soon. No, yeah, yeah, we don't have we're not done yet, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Any other questions, Casey? So then, I guess our last meeting, I guess, I saw I was kind of kind of told, I guess, even if they're going to tie into Arden, tie into Arden except water line, that property would then be, I guess, like part of the city. But now that's not going to be that way. Or... Say that again. So then, so then I guess our last meeting, I guess, they were supposed to We're supposed to bring in, bring in, I guess, a strip of land that would then be, that would be, a, that would be a, a city property, or not city property, but, but I mean, like in the city. We talked about annexation. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about now. So then. It, it, we, we rescinded that when we just rescinded that motion. And what I had presented at the last meeting was that um, we, we have a history to where we have annexed into the city when city services were provided to the property. We also have an example within uh, the, the city here or, or out external to the city where we have provided city service and we did not annex them in. So we got examples down both paths. So. We may want to have some further discussions for future situations so that we, we have a, a clear direction in which we would go there. But in this case here, I don't see <clears throat> I don't see Mr. Snyder now tying into any of the city services. City water, he's got his own. He doesn't won't have city water, he'll have 
rural water from no. Southwood County. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, he is tying in to the water line that goes into the city down on Diapolis. That borders the, oh. the north border of the the, the, the Snyder mm -hmm. property. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought I, I didn't see him showing up on the the screen there, but I I thought he was going directly to Southwest. So he's going to the city-owned pipe that comes from the water tower to Diapolis. Correct. Or Elbow. Diapolis. 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 Yeah. 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 That's the line directly north of his where his site's going to be, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're right, Dan. We do need a clearer picture for future. Now, if Dustin decides to make the the Snyder development area up there and add homes, then yes, I want the entire piece to be annexed yeah. into our community. So. And that, so my, my point, Casey, is that um, since our last meeting, um, I learned some new information and in that we've got, we've gone both directions where we yeah. have, in, in my situation, quite frankly, it was uh, you, you, you get annexed in or you don't get the services. And in the other case, we did provide the service and we did not annex them in. And, and when we did approach annexing, they opted out be annexed. So I think we need to, as we develop a path forward, we need to have something that's clear yes. so that when this type of situation arises, we, it's a, an automatic answer to how it's approached. I agree with you. Pat? Well, I, the motion is to approve a building permit right. mm -hmm. and the water connection, can, that's going to be up to Dustin, I guess, if he makes that use to the city water you can act on that separately don't require board action for any connections to the city water you're not you don't ask them no they come in they fill out an application card okay. and they connect but they've got a building permit in that mm -hmm. that's why we need to make this more clear so this <laughs> controls which connection he can well he can well, still he can choose still southwest he can still, he can still do both yeah yeah you can do both and drill the wall. You can have three. <laughs> I've been there. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Justin, have you ever planned on selling any of those lots up there? It's to be not on my radar at all, I guess. You know, my my wife now, we really wanted to have some peace and quiet, you know, some country living. That's kind of where I selected the location of my house, way up in the corner there. I kind of wanted the country living. So, yeah, I have no desire yeah. at any point in my life. Would you be against if we put a condition on this building permit that if you ever do decide to sell lots up there for building purposes that we annex the entire lot? Mm. No. Dustin. No, we're talking to Dustin. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Marie. That's so sure. What's that? It certainly would seem that if I was developing it, you know, for financial gain and it was close to the city, um, you know, I can see where that would serve the city's interests better to have, you know, that be part of the city. And I'm sure people, if they were located that close to um, city sewer and city water, it would be kind of silly to for them to do all, you know, have big septic fields developed, certainly much more, more costly uh, versus connecting to that. Um, I don't know if that's something where it'd be conditional in my use or if you guys are considering to perhaps um, vote or develop language like Jerry was discussing with future projects um, moving, you know, kind of if there's just going to be an, a, a policy going forward with this. Um, you know, like I said, I have no um, desire to, to ever do that as long as I live there, but, you know, I don't know how it would work if, um, you know, 30, 40 years down the road, I sell my house or it goes to someone else if that clause would carry over with them. I, I don't understand uh, legally how that would exactly shake out. I don't know if that would be me selling it. Someone would say, oh, you know, if that would um, affect me doing, you know, down the line once I don't own it anymore. So I guess uh, I'm not, uh, yeah, there'd be, I, kind of just on the spot right now. I don't know. Okay. Have to, okay. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I wouldn't recommend the conditional approval because 
there'll be opportunities if that were ever to happen that would go through the pine zoning it would come back to you folks again he's going to subdivide so i think you should just act on what you have before you without any conditions to sure. up or down sure okay we have a motion and we have a second any more discussion Okay, roll call. Miller. Aye. Pat. Aye. Stern. No. Weeger. No. Obenauer. Aye. <coughs> Carried. No. I will I will make a comment that let's say you build your home. Let's say something happens. You and your wife move away. Your mom and dad may not want that property up to you. might want to sell it, and, and it might go as an entire chunk. Therefore, yeah, that that's why I would say that we would want to annex the entire thing into our community. So it's, it's it, it makes sense. It really makes sense. Okay. So you know, if, yeah, if they were to sell it and people wanted to divide those lots, yeah. and then like, obviously yeah. those people would have to apply for Correct. building permits, and that would be a situation where then the city right. could then act on. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 Marie, do you have a comment? Yeah. That was once all city annexed into the city. But why did they let it go back? I don't know. Because there was no development. Right. The North Star Court. There was never a road up there. There, there was there were no other <coughs> houses. There was nothing. Right. But, but now we, we, we have we have water, water we have sewer right there now. Yeah. So it didn't make sense. You're right. It didn't make sense long time ago. I agree with that. The only, Marie, the only reason I question that is because to get to Dustin's place, the only access is going through the city. Mm -hmm. So city snow removal, city streets, all that, he's taking <coughs> advantage of that. He's not paying city taxes. Is he the only one? The advantage? No, the he's advantage not. of that well, Tom is not to their house. Yeah. That's hardly anything. I'm the last one on the list to get plowed out. I usually do it myself. Marie, I'm not sure how you're getting excited no, because we're having a discussion here. We're, there's nothing wrong with thinking out of the box. Consideration of, yeah. Because you use that road. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then there's a lot of, a lot of reasons. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Good point, though, Dustin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go. moving on. Good luck with your building permit okay. and building your when you when this starting? Um the it's the house is arriving uh, in the spring now. So um yeah, I was originally gonna be trying to uh you know, I was kinda wanting to get this figured out so that I can start with some concrete pouring, but now that's on the back when it's just, 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 just off. So, so awesome. Good luck. Thank you. So he's gonna be able to look up to see why. With with the approval. Mm -hmm. He's got to fill out the application and yeah. So it goes to city hall to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to reports, 9A, water sewer garbage. I have nothing to report tonight. Lake Dan Street Cemetery. Well, pleasantly pleased at the break. <laughs> Approval that we approved on the payloader, that was the fix. I talked to Dave this afternoon because he will make the meeting. That's the first question I asked. That was the problem that he got. Because it was a hell of a lot cheaper than in the other direction. Was well, so. it both the accumulators or just one? He ever said, both. whatever both. Was, both. was there both on there? I, I blessed the quote, but I so. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, other than that, uh, still doing fall work, you know, trim a few branches and stuff here and there. Street and just kind of preparing for fall right now. Mm -hmm. Well, it did get me. There was no exciting negative news. So. Okay. And I had a comment from an 18 year old. Young lady the other day that said, Wow, Dad. I mean, wow. <laughs> I can't believe how well that new sweeper picks up leaves. That's pretty awesome when a kid notices that. 
<laughs> I didn't want to have my daughter's name changed. <laughs> okay. Finance busting library. <coughs> I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. Please fire forestry. I have nothing at this time. Oh, uh, nope. Take that back. Um, we did get the trailer purchased for the fire our forestry department, and we hit it exactly right, so we actually got it on sale. Um, I don't exactly remember the total, but it's like eighteen hundred dollars cheaper. Or but there was eleven hundred dollar discount. Eleven hundred dollar yeah. discount. So and then he ended up picking up a uh, spare tire. Then and mm -hmm. so I think we totally saved like eight hundred dollars total, if I remember. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it did come with the solar panels already. Oh, it did? Okay, good. Because those trickle chargers and those things are not so great. Good. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Buster. Okay, well, I'll try to be short. How does that sound? Appreciate it. Last Wednesday, uh, we had our two focus group meetings with our uh, consultant. We did the high school kids in here. We had 14 high school kids that were in here. And uh, it turned out really, really well. Uh, he said they, they were very open and a great group to work with. So that was great to hear. And then when we finished with them, then about an hour later, we met over at the Bison in the conference room over there. And we had 11 business owners down there and participated in the same kind of exercise and that went very very well as well lots of good discussion uh, Dan happened to be on the panel uh, of one of them who had a chance to do some things with with the group so the next step in the process now of course is they're going to put uh, that information together and get it back to us with the idea that there'll be a third focus group and that third focus group is going to include the wider community, okay? And we're going to we'll set that up so that's probably an evening event with the idea to incorporate them some of the things that they learned from the kids and also from the business section uh, and uh, going forward. So uh, went well. Uh, Jerry and I were at the WDA Western Dakota Energy Association. Uh, conference in Watford City. Uh, lots of good speakers. I'll just touch on a couple of them. One is, uh, and I've heard about it before, is uh, the trace minerals, the opportunity for trace minerals out of the coal, and that stuff is just beginning to look like um, uh, it's going to be uh, really probably a pretty big, big time in terms of where we're at because realize that most of those minerals are coming from China, okay? And uh, there's a lot of trace minerals that they've identified that they can get out of, and they like the lignite better than over, the other, coal. Mm -hmm. than over the other coal, and of course we have mass supplies of that in ERIC, which is the energy center over at Grand Forks, uh, has done some uh, a lot of work with it, and the big, the big thing will now will be is uh, mining it and then finding an end market for it. But for instance, uh, we were told that in a fighter jet, there's 900 pounds of trace minerals that go into that fighter jet. Okay, per jet, yeah. per jet, and we have the capabilities of of mining that stuff here in our backyard, basically. And so, the, the, to my way of thinking, I think the problem is going to be is it's going to take a while yet before that all comes into play. But eventually, in the future, I think it's really, really good for, for that. Uh, heard, a, heard a session uh, about the upcoming legislature uh, changes that are going to be in place. There are going to be lots of changes because there's going to be about 71% of the uh, people in the house that are changing 
and 25% in the Senate, I believe, if my numbers are correct. So that's going to be a lot of change that's going to be taking place there. All the leadership, the main leadership, of course, have, has retired. Uh, so it'll be interesting, to say the least. Uh, and, you know, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that it, uh, it goes well. So there'll be a lot of uh, uh, freshmen people in, in there from all around the state. Uh, the last thing that I'll just talk about, and you probably did see this on uh, TV or in the news, but the governor just recently returned from a uh, trade mission in Japan. And uh, my understanding is, is that that went really, really well. And so I think that we're eventually we're going to see some things happening uh, in that uh, with that country as well, and us in terms of where that's at. So I'll let Jerry finish the, the topics. Only one I'm going to touch on is when Buster was talking about harvesting the rare earth elements. That can be done before coal is processed or it can be done in the ash piles. The rare earth elements are it's stable. Still in the yep. ash? Mm -hmm. okay. So those ash piles you see like by coyote when you drive by a mountain there. A mountain. Pick that back up. Even though it's <laughs> probably a giant piece of concrete right now that can be still Ooh. harvested. I asked the, the engineer um, that evening, um, I said, so if we had one cubic yard of lignite, and it's not all lignite, it's the top portion of one of the veins or out of the ash pile, how much, how much rare earth elements would come out of a cubic yard? He goes, enough to fill your solo cup. That's about what it is. And that's, you know, like you said, the 900 pounds of it goes in each fire jet, not to mention all well, ships mm -hmm. and, every, you know, our cell phone, every, everything. You know, it's it's amazing what what all has uh, that stuff in it. So the, the having a processing facility and having an investor to do that is another thing they said that's going to be a, a huge hurdle to but, uh, it was a fascinating conference. Uh, thank you for letting me attend. Um, and uh, there was just a lot of good speakers. Um, Josh Keegan is the new head of the Commerce Department. He was he's the one that was on that trade mission to Japan as well. Um, sharp young fellow, and uh, he just was very informative and uh, very excited about the pro the possibilities of. Uh, New business outside of uh, our state boundaries. Let's move on to 12A, uh, Public Works Maintenance Software. Equips. Look, look at a lot of different companies did a free thing through a software advisor company and they hooked us up with six different vendors that do maintenance, work orders, record keeping of preventative maintenance, and those types of things. Uh, narrowed it down to two of them after Dave and I watched another presentation in the last week or two, and they are Equips and MaintainX. We are actually using a trial version of MaintainX. They gave us trial until January 1. Uh, Dan seen some of the reports we're able to generate from MaintainX. We set up preventive maintenance that every day the water or wastewater guys go in and they check off each uh, an inspection of each lift station, note if there's any issues with it or any of that. Uh, the idea would eventually be that we can deploy this either through our app or on the website so the public could then report, you know, we got a water leak or a suspected water leak at this location and our staff would automatically be notified. Uh, so just some options there. As uh, I think I said in the notes, they're basically almost identical software with, except for the pricing. Maintain X comes in almost $1,000 a year less, which is at least $4,000 a year less than what we're paying for the mobile 311 now. Mm -hmm. So on to the information that we have in our current software, is there anything in there that would 
migrate into this? Would they be able to suck it out of the old and put it in the new, or do you start from scratch? No, basically we would end up starting from scratch. The only thing with these is at this time they don't offer the GIS mapping, but that is something that the staff can get on their phone. It's, it's, it takes a little time because your phone doesn't process as fast as your computer does. Or we could look at, you know, a reasonably priced tablet that would have a little more functionality than a phone and be a little bit bigger for them to use in the field and they could just access the, the map that Moore has provided us online. What, if any, action are you looking from the board, Monty? Well, I guess if you're not prepared to make, take action on recommending a purchase of either one, I can say, I've been telling these people that something we wanted to, if we if we proceed, would be deploying after the first of the year when our new budget takes effect. So, I mean, if you want to take a look at it some more, or I can get you some more information or screenshots of what each program looks like, uh, we can sure do that. So, so the, the sample that they gave you guys to work with, does it include some of these modules that you're talking about? This is a, we have a fully functioning trial of the maintain apps. So do you feel that, that you and the, the staff have absorbed everything that they can absorb at this point and that their recommendation would be to, to go with this system, one stop shopping at a lower price? They, they've all been pleased with it and especially when it comes to the inputting information uh, the Maintain X has a lot of capabilities that we haven't even used yet, uh, taking photos out in the field. I know the Forester has done some of that, but our water and wastewater haven't done a lot of that. One of the things that would be nice with this would be there is a large asset library that we could actually take pictures of hydrants or whatever and say, you know, what year they were put in and all of the information to go with that. Uh, obviously, that would take a lot of time, but as they're doing uh, the lead copper inventories going into every house, it would be a, something that, aside from that information, you could put other information in there as well. That's where curb stops located, or those types of things. And if we did move to to move to this software, we would be waiting until the uh, the next calendar year to use that budget. Yes. We've been assured by both that they would start the process of onboarding us, but they would not invoice until after the first of the year. So you're saying we could actually work with it to where we would not lose any of that information, but not have to pay the bill until after the first of the year? Correct. And as I say, the Maintain X is a full, it's basically a full version we have on trial until January 1, so. <coughs> So Monty, are we using the mobile 311? The, the renewal is November. Right. So we would just be without I haven't received current. the invoice. Well, we still have the maintain exit. That's what you go sure. with sure. as the trial. So okay. we wouldn't lose right. that. Okay, good. Okay. If that's the direction you want to go. I just think it's it's nice to have some type of system because you know, when you have these sewer backups or water breaks, the first thing the insurance looks for is, well, what are your records on when was the last maintenance done on this or when was the last time it was inspected? You can go in here rather than thumbing through notebooks of paper looking for when it was done. Mm -hmm. It'll save some staff time and everything. And money. And money. Uh, is, there, is there any value in Delaying the, the decision at this point and allowing our folks to continue working with it and dig deeper into it uh, up until the next meeting and then we could readdress it then? I don't have any issue with that. I, like I say, there are some things that they haven't done with it yet. If we can dig into them within the next three weeks, whatever, till the next meeting, yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. I, 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 I'd like the thought of making a change over, but let's do this. Dig a little more. And the next bring back to the next meeting and we'll um, address it then. Okay. okay. Grant, are you familiar at all? No. Okay. <laughs> you don't will be. Yeah. No. 
All right. Thanks, Monty. Well, B, permitting and uh, enforcement software. Similar thing, uh, our current vendor for our accounting, utility billing, payroll, Black Mountain software does have a code enforcement and a permitting package. They are separate packages. Uh, basically got a hold of Beulah. They use this program called iWork. It seamlessly does everything digitally. So depending on who our inspector is or if we make changes there, everything would still go to them electronically. They would submit reports electronically. Uh, the code enforcement part, rather than sitting down and handwriting out notices to people that their grass is too long, you just go in and you pick the property, it generates the notice, it'll keep track of what mm -hmm. fees were charged to them and those types of things. just so sad that we even need a software like this. Well, the permitting part would be very nice as far as tracking those permits and what conditions and inspections and plans. But yeah, as far as the enforcement, it's nice this one includes the enforcement, but I mean, if you wanted to save a little money, you could just go with the permitting through Black Mountain. And we can just continue to, to do the enforcement the way we have been. I'd like to do some more formal, actually. It seems like Monty spends a lot of time typing up those letters and mm -hmm. getting them out. Yeah. If I would do more, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> you said Beulah works with this and they really like it. Yes, I spoke to Heidi over in Beulah. She does their, she's their city planner assessor and she has been very pleased with the product and they they automatically forward their work to their contractor, which is Interstate Engineering for inspections and plan review. Okay. Any questions? What's the renewal? When is the renewal on this stuff? Actually, we are not actually paying for the permitting or code enforcement at this time. We, the city did purchase the permitting, but since it wasn't used, we're not charged the annual maintenance on it. So we actually just, the bill for Black Mountain and all the other packages is in the bills for this period, but there, there will be nothing for the permitting or code enforcement since we are not utilizing them. So this would basically be a new expense. And if we use Black Mountain permitting, it'd be sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So if we like this on the route, our current uh, inspector would he have to have access to all this too? Assuming, and would he be willing to? Yeah, he would. Have, he would be able to have access. It is a web-based program, okay. so it's just a matter of setting him up as setting receiving the alerts. Okay. Or whoever, or whoever's the right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. They'd okay. be under the city umbrella, if you will. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And again, if you want, I can visit with Heidi some more and get some more examples of what they're using or visit with the company some more if you wanted to see some other stuff that either of them does. Why don't you bring this back next at the next meeting as well, Monty? Okay. I'll get you some more information. Okay. All right. Okay. 13, public comment. Okay, seeing them, we'll move down to approval of bill. Motion to approve the bills as presented. Okay, we have motion by Pillar, second by Wiedrich. Discussion? Roll call. Pillar. Aye. Wiedrich. Aye. 
Pat. Aye. Stern. Aye. Bolden. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.